Sunday, because I've been missing something. You are faithful. You make a big difference. And it's strange to speak to you now through this live stream video. But I am grateful that we have the technology to continue building the community even in the shadow of the pandemic. For that, I thank God. And I thank you for your virtual presence with us this morning. We joke about how 2020 can't get any worse. We have an ongoing pandemic. Our friends and our family members can't go back to work or loss of jobs. Wounds in our society open, church and community doors closed. And for us now, California is on fire. It's been a crazy year. And if we're fortunate, many of us are at home, stuck there, healthy, but a bit lonely, bored, but sick. What are we to do? God has our answer. Take action and don't do it. What did we do when we were first closed off from our family and friends back in March? We picked up the phones. We sent those texts. We scheduled family Zoom meetings that never would have happened before. We helped our neighbors and those suffering around the world. And our loved ones. We rallied around issues that matter to, to us. And we picked up conversations with old friends and focused on what's really important in our lives. We took action. And what's strange about all this is that we're stuck at home and sheltering in place as if there's nothing to do. We're sick of the same old things, the same old walls. The truth is, we have become lazy over time. But staying at home does not necessarily mean that there's nothing to do. Isn't it strange that waking up at the same time every day, making your bed, and putting on these new clothes is somehow a challenge now? That's what we used to do every day. What happened? Laziness happened. So what does God say about laziness? Well, in a way, it's a sin. Laziness, sloth, is a sin. It's one of the seven we mentioned during confession. Harbutyam, Nahanzu, Harbutyam, Zulutyam. Pride, envy, anger, sloth, right? Why is it sin? Because like all other sin, it separates us from God. We become less human, and we become less connected to those around us. Laziness is like being in a constant state of inaction, doing nothing. And the opposite of laziness is taking action, doing something doing the work. And work is built into our nature and God's. God works to create the world. And in Genesis, he said, he put Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden to work and take care of it. They had to do so. The Garden of Eden wasn't a place where Adam and Eve could relax in paradise all day. But instead, a garden that needed to God wanted them to work and care for the garden just as much as he worked to care and create the earth. God put us on earth to do something. Not sit around and consume. And yes, we're all trying to figure out exactly what he wants us to do. I'm trying to figure that out myself, but we'll never get that answer if we aren't actively pursuing it. Remember, we are made in the image of God, the Creator. Therefore, it is our duty to be like Him and create. Okay, so God wants us to avoid laziness by taking action and creating. But what if we're not happy with the work that we do? Well, God calls upon us in Scripture and says, whatever you do, Work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord, not merely for people. So here's what he wants. He wants us to do what we do in the name of the Lord. Not for our boss or ourselves or someone else. But do it for God. This scripture reminds me of what my friend Todd used to say. He'd say, 
made a job be big or small, do it well or not at all. And the point is to do it right, to do the right thing, and do it forever. God gave us all a unique set of talents, and when we don't put them to use, it's sad. Our talent is a privilege, a responsibility, for us to use what we have been given for the good of this world in the name of our Lord. And I think about this all the time. It reminds me of one of my favorite verses from Luke chapter 12, verse 28, which says, To whom much is given, much is required. So how do we avoid laziness? How do we do what is required? Because we have been given so much. Well, first, by taking care of ourselves, eating right, and exercising, because you can't take action if you're not healthy. Second, remember the purpose that drives your life in why you do what you do. When we become lazy, it's usually because we've forgotten our why to keep us motivated. And we just need to be reminded. Third, Take the next step. We often worry about that long-term picture in life, but in order to even have a glimpse of what that might look like, all we have to do is take a small step. Talk to that person. Send that email. Put in the time. Read that chapter before bed. Say those prayers. Focus on the things you can't control and take the next step. To be clear, it's okay to take a day to relax, sleep in, watch that on the beach. Rest is not the same as laziness. Remember, God rested on the seventh day, the Sabbath, to show us the principle and importance of rest. And it could be the reason why we're celebrating Labor Day in America, which is this weekend, to rest. But the best way to avoid laziness is active worship. Doing something. We can't be lazy in our prayers either. God has high expectations from us. He calls upon us to help others and pray. If God is an active God, then we have to be active too. I worry though, especially now, will we fall to laziness? I stand here before an empty congregation, wondering, when this pandemic is said and done, will everyone come back? Our virtual church, will it become part of the new normal? I sure hope not. That's laziness by definition. There is no action. Church service is not meant to be watched, but to be joined. Let's not allow laziness to take away our beliefs or our dedication to our community. This is our call to action. So ask yourself, today, what does God require of you to take action? We're all sitting at home, but that doesn't mean we should sit and watch or be lazy. We must still participate where we can, remotely or otherwise act where we can, monetarily or with our voices, and do our part because we have been given so much. This year, right now, continue to make those phone calls, help your neighbor, reach out for love and support, take action on things that matter to you, vote, get creative, and supplement our prayers with action. This world will not get better if we just stand by idle, it needs us all. Pandemic or no pandemic, we all know what it's like to be lazy. And we are called to use what we have been given by God to create. So take the next step to prepare to do something. If you, like me, believe in the, to live, want to live in a world that is better than when you came into it, so that all people that you love and people you've never even met can
can live better because of the work that you have done and how you left it, then that's the world we are all called 